Hey, I'm Caleb, and this is the only card scraper I can find in my shop, which is the one I use the least. Don't know if tools ever disappear on you. But anyway, I've got an old saw blade and angle grinder die grinder, so I figure I'll try to make some. Stick with me, and I'll show you how you can make this too. This video is sponsored by the Home Depot Prospective Tool Review Program. There will be links below to all the products I use, as always. I assume if you're watching this, you're familiar with a card scraper and know what it's used for, but if you're not, stick around to the end and I'll go over why and how they're useful. I've got a feeling this is gonna be easiest if I take the handle off first, so. That was really easy. Never saw that coming. Invariably, the next time I need one of these, I'm not gonna be able to find it, so I'll go ahead and make a spare while I'm at it. The holes for the saw handle make this wasted space for trying to get a rectangular piece, but it works pretty well for trying to get this weird one. So to make sure this part of the saw isn't wasted, I'll just mark this out of here. And if you don't have one to template off of, then just use some French curves or eyeball it, whatever works for you. Kind of looks like a sad little squash or something else. Now I'll use the spine of the saw with my speed square to get um, square edges. I don't know how big this is supposed to be. Let me look it up. Okay, it looks like about two and a half by six is the right size for the rectangular one. But while I'm on here, I'm just gonna make some rough cuts with the angle grinder. If you like free tools, I give away a free tool every month on Patreon. All you have to do is become a patron at any level and answer the contest question, which this month, October 2019, is a name recommendation for the Avion trailer that I'm restoring. And this is the prize this month. I don't know what next month's contest will be, but this DeWalt set is gonna be the prize. That month, I also have plan discounts, swag, monthly hangouts and shout outs. So special thanks to my investor level patron, Chris Harmon. I'll handle all the nooks and crannies with the die grinder, but to rough it out, I'm gonna use the angle grinder because I think this is gonna cut faster with a diamond wheel. I want to pick these up and keep working, but I've learned that metal that isn't red anymore can be anywhere between frigid and almost 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are probably still really hot. I have a nice scar that reminds me of that fact. A better way to remember is to just not be stupid. I tested these with some liquid and they're not hot anymore. So now I can start removing all this little dross slag flaking from cutting. Before I get any further, I'm gonna clean these up with some navel jelly. If you want a less caustic method, you could just soak these in vinegar for a while. This works a lot quicker. You can pick this stuff up at Home Depot. I'll just let this sit for a few minutes and then rinse it off in water and it'll be a lot cleaner. So the navel jelly wasn't doing much to remove the paint and whatnot, so I put it in some white vinegar, let it sit over the weekend and it did something. So let me get my hand in this strange and see what we're dealing with here. Ugh, this is pretty gross. Okay, I think we're gonna get some water and rinse these off. Yeah, all right, got some water. Now, I'm pretty sure this stuff's all pretty safe. I mean, vinegar is just acetic acid, but I'm not a chemist, so what the hell do I know? If you're watching this, it means it probably didn't end up eating my face off. But if it did, that's the kind of thing I put in my Instagram stories. So go follow me on Instagram if you want those kind of project updates on the daily. I think we need even more water. That's fresher. Kind of looks like grape Kool-Aid. Okay, so I've got these cleaned off without any chemical burns, but uh, this still has a bit of a way to go for it looks like this. That's probably not gonna help me with curves very much. And like this one, I didn't do a very good job getting it straight. 
So I'm gonna use my little vise and work on that. With the coarse diamond disc, I was able to get this pretty flat. I'm gonna bring it home with a file. As the scratches go away, I'll know I'm getting close and I'm gonna set up some task lighting to help me see that. You can see how the ends are kind of dull compared to all the scratches in the middle where the file isn't hitting yet, that's kind of lower. All right, that looked good. Now just uh, lather, rinse, repeat on the other three sides. The edge. Now that that's gone, I'm gonna create a consistent burr with my burnisher. If you don't have a burnisher, you can just use a screwdriver. That works fine too. And all I'm trying to do is flatten this out to squish a little bit of metal to the sides to make a burr on each side. And if you fill a burr on one side but not the other, then you're probably tipping this. You wanna make sure you're holding it perpendicular. But you can correct that just by you know, taking a few swipes the other way. I've got a pretty consistent burr, but it needs to be bigger. Now, the biggest question about getting a burr on a card scraper is, how much pressure do you apply? Well, how much pressure is required can vary based on the type of metal the scraper is made from and the burnisher. For a saw blade and this, I like to apply this much pressure. Check it. If you don't feel a burr, do it harder until you feel a burr. Once you start feeling a burr, that's how much pressure you need. Now that the top of my card scraper kind of looks like a T with some material hanging out the sides, I'm gonna take that and roll it over a little bit to make a hook that I can scrape with. This is where some finesse is required because you don't want to curl it over too much. If you curl it too much, it's not gonna cut. It would go about a 10 degree angle and I'll just do three or four swipes. Yeah, and I can feel a little hook there. I've got my scrap walnut in here and should get a shaving. You just wanna put a little bit of bow in it and you'll find the angle Probably about 30, 45 degrees is about right. It's gonna vary based on how you turned your hook. I need to go a little bit lower. Like that. Let's try the other side. Now I just need to turn a burr on the other side. That's the nice thing about a card scraper is you really have one, two, three, four edges. So you shouldn't be burnishing a whole lot. Just burnish all the edges and then you can keep going. Now, personally, I like to chamfer the edge on the short sides a little bit, just so it's smooth for my fingers. But if you have another side hustle that requires you to not leave fingerprints, just put a burr on there and they'll be gone. I have a burr on this side, but not on this side. A quick note on that. You'll notice there's a space underneath my jaw faces. So I wanna make sure the side I've already done is below that in that space. If I put it up here and clamp it, I'm just gonna destroy the burr I made. If you have a leather-faced vise, that shouldn't be an issue, but if you're using metal or wood, you definitely wanna protect that burr. All right, now to refine the shape, I'm gonna use the die grinder with carbide burr. Screwing up the flat card scrapers with the file is easy. The file is flat or uh, should be, so it's gonna naturally make it flat. This is flat and I want this to be curved but smooth. And with all the scratches and discoloration, there's a lot of distractions that kind of throw off your eye when trying to see if you've got a nice fair curve. So a trick I like to use is just take a piece of white paper, hold it behind it and hold it up to a light. And now you're just looking at a shadow so all of those distractions kind of disappear and it's a lot easier to find any trouble spots. We've got a scene change for my gooseneck scraper because there's no way I can get all of this in my metal vise without ruining the burr. I need my leather vise. 
but the idea is the same as the square one. It's just curved. Don't have any rounded boards, but I'll give this a try here anyway. Just to be able to make some shavings. Yeah. So what's a card scraper good for? Why would you use it? Well, I mean, it scrapes, but why does that matter? Scraping is really effective in a few situations. Figured wood responds very well to scraping because sometimes you lose some of the luster of the figure if you sand it. Another time it's good is if you have dissimilar materials such as different wood species. Here I have some walnut, orange heart, and walnut, which is what I made my couch out of. That video is coming up soon. And the orange heart might sand slower than the walnut because it's harder. Scraper doesn't care. A plane also doesn't care, so why not plane it? Well, on an outside curve, a convex shape like this, that's no problem. But on the pieces I actually cut, which were concave, I can't get in there with a plane or a sander if I thought a sander would work. But the scraper will get into that convex shape just fine. Another time is, like I said, dissimilar materials. So when I do fills on cracks and knot holes or repairs with epoxy or CA glue, I often don't want to sand that because if I try to sand it, odds are the wood is going to get eaten up by the sandpaper quicker than whatever I'm repairing with because it's harder. And then I'm just going to create a divot around the area so I'll never get it flat. But a card scraper, because I have a rigid surface, is only going to take the highest surface until it's flat. You can sometimes try a plane, but sometimes on those materials, planes don't cut well, or because it relies on the reference surface, it's just planes don't like to go over bumps sometimes. Car scrapers work really well or just get into tricky spots. Anyway, I hope that was useful or you were at least entertained. Until next time, make time to make something.